Welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your co-host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again, my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Richie, the football staff is finally rounded out. Uh, we hired uh, former NFL offensive line coach Pat Flaherty this morning as Rutgers offensive line coach um, to fill the offensive staff. We now have all 10 assistant coaches for the 2023 season. As long as nothing unforeseen happens, this will be the coaching staff going into the year. Um, this is a, a really solid hire and just kind of continues the path of Shiano trying to go out and get really experienced coaches uh, over, you know, potential recruiters uh, taking shots in the dark on, on coaches that don't have a ton of experience. Uh, tell us a little bit about Flaherty and, and how this came together. Um, yeah, so we actually mentioned Flaherty uh, a week ago, I think it was today. Actually, I think it was a week ago today when we posted the uh, other hot board, hot board 3.0 because two yep. weren't enough. Um, and if you listen to yeah. the pod yesterday, we talked about them too. Yeah, so I, I mean, it, um, it kind of came together relatively. I shouldn't say relatively quickly. It took some time, but uh, he's a Pennsylvania native. Uh, he's a Rutgers uh, assistant coach at one point back in the day, where he wasn't the full time O line coach. I think he was the assistant of offensive line coach. Whatever. There's all kinds of crazy roles out there. But uh, he also has connections to Kirk Soraka. Um, he was Kirk's. Uh, or he's an or analyst at Penn State when Kirk was the OC in 2020. So they do know each other. Um, I obviously know him most of, like, I hear Pat Flaherty, and my first reaction is like, Giants, 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 Giants. Like, yep. oh, yeah, like, I know that guy. Um, he's He's got, like, I don't even know where to start. Like, he helped <laughs> Penn State win a national championship in 82. The guy's resume is just long, first off. Um, he was two times Super Bowl coach with the Giants. Spent, what, 10, 15, 20? 20 years maybe even? In, yeah, I think it's 20 years in the NFL as a as a tight ends coach and offensive line coach. He's, he's been everywhere. Um, this guy just – and everyone I talk to just can't stop raving about how good he is as an offensive line coach. Like Immediately, I know I talked to Rich Sieber, and that article is going to come out shortly on our site. Uh, he's a former New York Giant under him, under uh, Flaherty for a couple years. I think he played 10 years with the Giants or something like that. He's yep. part of one of those Super Bowl rings. Uh, and he's now watching Hills head coach. He just – couldn't stop talking about how how great of a development of talent this guy is. He said this guy is going to work his ass off, and that's a true quote, word for word. Um, <laughs> he, he's telling me how he just doesn't stop grinding. He loves the game of football. Um, yeah, he's a little older in age, but he'll 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 do just about anything to make this thing work. So, and the nice thing is, it doesn't really feel like he's going anywhere. It seems like a guy that's already he's a career assistant, and I think he's close enough to home in Pennsylvania that he can kind of. He can make this job work for maybe a couple of years at least before he retires. I know he's already 66, so I would have to talk retirement at some point. Um, but he's, he basically, Siebert basically told me like day one, he's going to walk in that office and I can guarantee you day two that these guys are going to be better. He's, he's that confident in this guy's coaching abilities. Uh, and I just, I think this is a great hire for Shiano. And I, I know people, some people ask me already, they're like, Hey, like how, how's he going to fit under Shiano? Like I, I know he's a little bit of an older guy and I'm, and, I actually asked Siebert that too because I wanted to just get his opinion. He goes, "The guy coached under Coughlin. He can coach yeah. under Shiano." Oh my god! You got it. You bring a good point. So he goes, "They're different in their own ways, but they're also similar in styles of coaching." So I think this is a great hire for Rutgers, and uh, you need a developer of talent on that O line, and that's that's what you're getting here. Um, the cool thing is, I watched a clip of him yesterday from the Miami Dolphins. Uh, training camp or spring camp, whatever the hell it is, summer camp. I, I don't know. One of the <laughs> And he was, uh, they asked him, they're like, why, why'd you switch like the starting center already? Like he's been the starting center for like two or three years. I forget what his name was, but uh, he switched him. And he was like, honestly, everyone gets a clean slate with me. So I know we might have penciled in starters here and there, but I, I think everyone's getting a clean slate at Rutgers. And I think he's going to basically just hand him the offensive line room. I know how Shiano kind of is going to hand Shiraka the offense. I think the offensive line room, Shiraka and Shiano are agreeing. And it's like, hey, Pat, you have the experience. You know what you're doing. You've done it at every level. Here it is. You you do whatever you need to do. If you want Holland Pierce at left tackle, we'll put him at left tackle. You want Kobe at center, we'll put Kobe at center. Uh, you want Willie Tyler over here, that's fine. You want um, third string left tackle as your starting right tackle, that whatever. We trust you. So I think that's a... I think this is a really good hire. I'm very, very confident in this one. Now, recruiting-wise, and we, we could talk about that. But 
Yeah, I mean, his like you said, his his resume speaks for itself. I mean, he's 66 years old to talk about his age, but he's been a college coach for 20 years. He was an NFL coach for 20 years, 16 years in the NFL as an offensive line coach. If you look at some of those Giants offensive lines, you mentioned Rich Siebert. He was an undrafted guy. He played 10 years yeah. in, the, in the league. Sean O'Hara, undrafted guy. He played, you know, a, 11 years in the league. You look at a guy like familiar. David Deal. Yeah, see, it sounds familiar. Where, where have we heard his name from? <laughs> Uh, David Deal, he was a fifth round pick. He was one of the anchors of that offensive line for the Giants Super Bowls. Uh, you look at a guy like Kareem McKenzie, he was seen as kind of like a bust coming from the Jets to the Giants. And, mm -hmm. and Pat Flaherty turns into, turns him into like, you know, borderline pro bowl talent. Chris Snee was a second round pick, but he was, you know, an anchor on that offensive line. Um, Pat Flaherty's just developed guys. He didn't have like a, a room full of first round picks when he won his two Super Bowls. He just developed guys that he saw a talent in and, and formed them into to high level players in the NFL. And I could see him doing that at, at Rutgers too, because it's not like we don't have talent. We have, you know, we had two really good offensive line classes out of the high school ranks. These guys just need to be developed. And this is the kind of guy you need to hire. Um, and it just kind of continues the, the trend Shiano this off season of taking, instead of taking shots on guys he thought could be good recruiters and maybe good coaches one day, He's hiring guys who are proven coaches and kind of letting recruiting uh, be handled elsewhere, I guess. Because there's a new rule with the NCAA as well that more uh, that anybody could basically be on the road now. I think that's coming into effect this year. Yeah. Not yet. It will be soon. I, I don't think you got approved officially yet. I could be wrong on that. Okay. But I don't think it's officially approved yet. Okay. So that's... The, the NCAA wants to do that. I, will it happen? Who knows? But if that's the case, like you don't necessarily need your, you, you need coaches and you need recruiters. They don't have to be the same people anymore. Um, and just looking at the guys that Shiano has replaced this off, this off season, let's take a look at offensive line. You take a guy, Augie Hoffman, who was a high school coach four years ago or five years ago. He coached, you know, two years at running backs coach for Rutgers and he coached last year at offensive line coach. So a guy who had one year of experience at the Power 5 level, you're replacing him with a guy who's coached offensive line for 40 years in Flaherty. Let's take a look at Dave Brock. You know, he's replacing Jameer Shaw, who had one year as receivers coach at the FCS level, and then one year with the Panthers as an assistant uh, wide receivers coach. Now you're replacing him with a guy who's coached for a dozen years at the Power 5 level as a wide receivers coach and five years at the NFL level as a wide receivers coach. Offensive, uh, offensive coordinator. Uh, <laughs> you have a guy who's coaching previously at the FCS level primarily. He had one year at Oklahoma State. And a lot of people have, that I've read have said that he basically didn't even call the offense there under Gundy. Uh, so you're replacing him with a guy who's been an offensive coordinator at the Power 5 level for 15 years. Uh, so experience, experience, experience. Guys who know what they're doing. Guys who don't need to learn on the job. Guys who are going to be able to be plug and play. Uh, coaches along the offense. I really like the philosophical change that Shiano has taken in his coaching search from, you know, the first, because he didn't really have too many replacement coaches these past few years. This is probably the biggest grouping that he's had to replace in one off season. And I, I really like the, the shift that he's taken with his approach. Yeah, no, he's, he's been doing this. Uh, I guess he did it with the defense. He did a different approach, but it's just like, all right, defense stunk everyone out. New, new group. We're trying this again. So now uh, it looks like they just they basically did the same thing with offense. And a ton of NFL experience. You have Shiano as head coaching experience. Brock, who you mentioned uh, with the Falcons. And now Flaherty, who's Jaguars, 49ers, Giants, Redskins, uh, I forget, uh, Dolphins. Uh, the Dolphins one's actually a little interesting, and I want to bring that up um, because it's weird. He got hired in, like, January and got fired in, like, June of, like, the same season. Yeah, that was a weird situation because Flores hired him as their offensive line coach and mm -hmm. fired him four days into training camp and replaced him with his longtime assistant, that Dave DeGuglioma guy. Yes, um, I don't know what Boston the... College's offensive line coach now, actually. Yep. Uh, I don't know what the, the disagreement was there, but I remember that being a very big story in Flores' first year. Yeah, so um, back to your recruiting type thing. Two things. Number one, I just read that they did vote on it and it got shut down for now so we'll see what happens okay. at least for this season we'll see what happens they're probably bringing it back up in june when they meet up again on ncaa all that nonsense now one thing i found interesting i kind of want to see if there's a way to do this because 
if you're Rutgers, you have to be a little unique with stuff, right? You got to change it up and stop doing the same. Like what works at Bama is not going to work at Rutgers. What works at Ohio State is not going to work at Rutgers. You have to be different. So how can you be different? I would try to look into a way, and I don't know if this is possible. I don't think it is because I don't know. I don't have the NCAA rule book in front of me. So Flaherty is your old line coach. That's fine. He can recruit on campus. Instead of making the guy travel crazy amounts and like, hey, hit this plane here. Hey, two hours later, go, go there. Why not put Falone on the road? Pay him a little more. Let him be your on-the-road recruiting guy, and then let Flaherty just be your offensive line coach. Obviously, Flaherty's going to make the big bucks because coaching at the end of the day is coaching. Like, that's, yep. that's what you're paid for. Uh, but recruiting is, is the lifeblood, so you pay, you pay a little more to Valone, whose contract is running out at the end of February. Uh, I'm expecting it to be renewed. but And he, he's been connecting really well with some of these kids, uh, especially in the, the Long Island scene where he's from. So. I wonder if you could probably find a way to do that. I'm sure there's some kind of workaround if you really wanted to. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just an idea. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely see that. I think that's going to be I think that's going to be a, a pivot that a lot of teams undertake where you have one guy whose strength is coaching, the other guy whose strength is offensive or is, uh, recruiting. Because some guys can do it both, both ways, but – not everyone is a great recruiter and not everyone's a great coach. And I think you need to have both sides of that yin yang to, uh, to really be a good college program. So I can definitely see that. Um, especially at a school like Rutgers where they can't really attract the, you know, the, the hottest names, um, all the time. So I can definitely see that. It's uh, this, but overall, this this hire can't rave about it enough. This is a good one for a, a unit that has struggled mightily. Now, are they going to yep. be like? top five in the big 10 next year. No, they still don't like, that's just unrealistic expectations. Yep. Are they going to be better than whatever you want to rank them last year? Yes, probably. But I don't know uh, where you rank them and what they're going to be because they still need some help there. They're still at the end of yep. the day, they still need some guys. So we'll see what happens in the next couple of months, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, so stay tuned because it's, I know that they've changed the, that you said that they've changed the uh, spring practice uh, availability, right? Recently, uh, it's not going to be as open as it, I guess it's the same as last year, probably for the most part. There's, there's just, but if you if you want to go, you can just spend five hundred bucks a month on the nights of the Raritan. That's true. You can go watch practices, have a, a lunch with with Shiano. That's a, a one of the top level level membership uh, perks. Now, if you haven't already joined the the nights of the Raritan, uh, yes. that's that's one of the coolest perks they have. So definitely look into that. If, if you got $500 a month to drop on, on Rutgers uh, athletics, big one. Um, yep. Uh, but a, a couple other big then, uh, news yeah. items dropped yesterday. Um, let's just go with the more Rutgers centric one. Uh, NJ.com reported that Steve Peichel, um, is finalizing a lifetime contract to be Rutgers head coach. Um, mm -hmm. that's deserved. First of all, second of all, uh, what are you hearing regarding Wonder where they that, heard that from? Wonder where they got that idea from. We've been pitching well, that on the deal. pod. For, yeah, we've been pitching <laughs> on the pod for, what, what, like weeks now at this point? Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, it I doesn't sound like uh, – I don't know. It's weird. So what I was told is that there's there's nothing, like, set in stone. Like, there's, there's nothing, like – it's not like Pike signed a contract and – Brian reported it, and maybe maybe Brian's right. I don't know yet, but uh, I can tell you right now that no one has signed anything as of right now. Um, could it be a lifetime contract? Yeah, of course. Could it uh, include statue when retirement starts? Probably. Yeah, I would put that in there. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, nothing nothing is set in stone as of right now. Um, we'll see what happens. Does he deserve an extension? Of course. Like, the man's done something that I didn't think was possible at Rutgers under, with – the facility or lack of facilities. And then now if it's a facility that he does have. Um, it's, it's been incredibly impressive, especially with the, the way he's been recruiting. People have questioned it nonstop saying, uh, what the hell is this? Derek Simpson, three-star Antoine Wolf, a football player, three-star, which was weird. And it's, it's just worked out like nonstop. He's, he's just got the number seven player in the country or number five. I forget what Ace Bailey is. I think he's five. Yep. Um, number five player in the country. He's, we kind of leads into our next discussion. Uh, he's very close to pulling the number 10 player in the country, Dylan Harper. So, yeah, give the man a race. I don't care if it's a lifetime. I know some people are going to question it. I've had, like, four of my friends, like, dude, the man's made the tournament three times and or two times, going to be three, and he's only made it past, what, round one once? 
Yeah, but yeah. you don't understand like how bad the other 19 coaches before him were. <laughs> yeah, we were basically on Mars, uh, you know, for the previous 30 years as a basketball program, and now we're back on Earth. And just being back on Earth in terms of being relevant uh, is huge. And I don't think, if, unless you've been a Rutgers fan, you could truly understand how how bad the program was for, you know, as long as it was. So he deserves it. Uh, it shouldn't shouldn't be as hard as it is to win at Rutgers, but it is what it is. And Pike has kind of cracked that code. And he's really beyond just succeeding. Now he's like elevating the program to heights that it's probably not seen since the 70s um, in terms of not only national relevance, but being able to land like, you know, players in the top 10 of recruiting rankings, players that like every program in the country wants to land. Um, you know, we've been landing fringe four stars under Pike since he got here, which are great pickups, don't get me wrong, but landing these cream of the crop prospects is, you know, one of the two steps that he needs to take to really truly elevate this program. The other is making a deep tournament run, uh, which, you know, could happen this year. Uh, but those are the two main things and he's starting to accomplish the first and the second probably will come along with those players. So. Yeah, we'll see. But speaking of those players, uh, Dylan Harper, the aforementioned top 10 player in the country in the class of 2024, announced his final five yesterday. His final five are Auburn, Kansas, Indiana, Duke, and Rutgers. Uh, shouldn't really be a surprise with three of those teams. The, the other two, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like he's really taking seriously. Um, mm. Those other two being Auburn and Kansas. Seems like it's a one-two race uh, between Duke and Rutgers with Indiana on the outside looking in. Um, is that what you're kind of hearing? And do you know of any timeline regarding Dylan's uh, announcement? Or um, Summertime. Summertime, 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 summertime. So everyone relax on the boards. It's Yes, he has a top five. Yes, that usually means commitment's coming soon, soon-ish, I guess. Uh, he wants to decide in summer. He wants to take a couple more official visits. He obviously already took two to Indiana and Duke. Who I'm hearing are probably two and or one B and two, I guess. I guess that's how that works. Um, in his recruitment, one A would be Rutgers <clears throat> and one B would be Duke. So they're they're fifty fifty right now. It sounds like it sounds like Rutgers is actually inching ahead a little bit. So I'd say like I don't want to say too much, but like sixty forty. But that's even pushing it a little bit. I might well like fifty five forty five. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Indiana is a distant third now. Auburn obviously. Bruce Pearl and SEC with the money side would never throw money at people ever. ever. Oh no, they they've run a very that. clean program. Yes, they're actually about to land the number uh, twenty-one kid in the country, in Todd Pettiford. Pettiford, who is a Jersey boy from Hudson Catholic, I believe. Um, yeah, that sounds so, right. Yeah, so any Auburn fans that are listening to this, there's probably zero. There might be one now because I'm going to tag Pettiford in the, the little description thing. <laughs> He's he's there. He's committing. Like you're you're done deal there. Um. Anyway, I don't think Auburn's really that much of a threat, but I I could see them being like, hey, you know, like Rutgers stole a kid from our backyard in Georgia. Like, let's try to steal another one from them. Uh, I don't think it works. Kansas, Bill Self kind of just hates the NIL game. I know they play it, but he hates it. So I yep. just I don't see Kansas as much of a threat. I, I we've been saying this for months on the pod. What am I saying? We've been saying this for absolutely like months and months and months. It might even be a year at this point if you check back to order. Check the receipts. Uh, Dylan Harper has da he's down to Duke and Rutgers. That's how it works. You either go to the yep. Blue Blood program or you stay home and play for your brother's alma mater and figure that out and be a Jersey Jersey legend or just be a, a Duke legend. You, you're going to be a legend no matter where you go, so it doesn't really matter. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just it's whatever you prefer at the end of the day. And I, I think right now it's like this with Rutgers a little bit, but we've seen it where it was like this with Duke a little bit. So it's just kind of a balance, balancing game right now. I think uh, he ends up deciding in the summer. It's between one of those two. We just got to wait and see. Yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to bust something out really quick because if you take a look, if you take a look at uh, the post on Instagram yesterday that Dylan made announcing his – Final five. I see a lot of uh, eye emojis from people either committed to Rutgers or around the Rutgers program. A lot of people mm -hmm. alluding to knowing where he's going already. Um, so I'm not saying he's, you know, he's telling people where he's going, but it seems like there's a little smoke there. Um, who knows? Uh, yeah. This is just speculation also. I don't know any of this to be true, but just, you know, reading some tea leaves here. The one comment, Nas Cunningham, who's a top, what, 10, top 15 kid? 
Yeah. Did he? Uh, he said if he got a uh, 250 likes on his reply, he'll, he'll tell everyone where Dylan went. Now, obviously, this isn't like a real thing. He's yeah. not going to go out Dylan where he's going. But did he get 250? I was curious. 233. So if you didn't like it yet, it's right there. It's show Showtime. I don't know if you could see it. Showtime now. Wait, Showtime. Yeah. It's probably blurry, but whatever. Yeah. There's a Showtime. Yeah. Showtime. Yeah, sure Showtime Nas, go comment on that. That's backwards, but you know how to work it. Go to the comments, 250, <laughs> and, see, and see what happens when he gets to 250. He's probably just going to be like, no, nah, bro, I can't do that. Ho, ho, ho. But yep. uh, now my camera's blurry. God damn it. But uh, yep. yeah, that's going to have to render. That's rough. But um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, I, I think Rutgers has a pretty damn good shot. Yeah, I do too. Um, and. We have a game tonight, uh, speaking of Rutgers basketball against Minnesota. Rutgers, I believe, last time I looked, was a 14-and-a-half point favorite. Minnesota doesn't have its top three scorer for the season, Jay Garcia. Uh, so it should be it should be a, a fun game for Rutgers fans because they should win going away. But, you know, it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. So this is a huge game for, for Rutgers in the sense that get them back on track in time for the Michigan State game this weekend and then the, the Indiana game next week. Uh, so a good tune-up kind of game. Yeah, uh, so we, for sure. We've covered a lot here. Um, is there anything that I we missed out on that you wanted to, to reference before we sign off? Uh, I don't think so. I think we're uh, we got some hoop stuff going on on the boards. It's National Signing Day, but they're really not doing anything because it's they already got everybody. Yep. Um, a couple of walk-ons being announced today. Uh, a couple transfers were being announced as well. Big game tonight. Uh, it's sort of it's a big game, as in just don't lose. Um, yep. That's pretty much it. Uh, next Tuesday, or no, Saturday. Let's start with Saturday real quick. Saturday, uh, MSG, big game. Noon, no, noon. I think it's noon. Noon yep, game, noon. Michigan State, uh, neutral, sort, neutral site court. So as much as everyone hates that it's not a home game, it kind of helps in terms of Q uh, quad ranking. So... It doesn't really make a difference yeah. them, because they're in like a if, weird. If Michigan kind of stumbles a bit. If Michigan State, sorry, stumbles a bit, that it would buoy it up more. I think. Uh, I think a quad one win on a neutral site is up to like a top forty in the net, right? I will tell you in two seconds. Quad one in neutral sites, top one through fifty. So technically, okay, if this game 50. was played at uh, where's Michigan State? Yeah, if this game was played at uh, at Rutgers at the rack, it wouldn't be a quad one game. But since it's not, yep. it's quad one game. So go in there, win that two, you get two and zero. Oh, you might you're borderline ranked depending on what happens in the bottom half of the top twenty five. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But uh, and then Tuesday, big game, big pod, huge game, big game, big watch party. Buy a ticket. Stop being lazy. It's fucking fifteen dollars, <laughs> you cheap bastard. You're gonna save the money on yep. beer in the long run. And if you're a student, yep. it's only ten dollars. Yep. Like, do it. Like, sign up. I'm. I'm I got T-shirts. I got other stuff. Um, all kinds of apparel. We're gonna throw out and people that are drunk trying to catch it. And uh, hopefully, we get to watch the Rutgers win as well. So, and then, uh, yeah, it's two dollars a good time. Too, so. you can't be that. The Olive Branch puts yeah. on a good show uh, for any of these kind of events. If you haven't already purchased tickets, they're still available. Um, but from what we've been told, there there's not many left. So. Uh, make a make a point to to try and get those today if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, we didn't expect to be having this pod today, but here we are. Um, big big pickup for the offensive coaching staff, and uh, I I've gone from pessimistic to optimistic regarding the staff because of all the experience. I think I think you're probably going to see a big jump from a lot of these young players with the improved coaching. Um, how it's going to affect the recruiting trail to be determined, but the coaching right now is more important than the recruiting, in my opinion. Um, but that's kind of all we got. So for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast, signing off.